Hi, I'm Ryan Baker, and this is Big Day in Education. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things on the planet, cross-validation, and one of my least favorite things on the planet, overfitting, which cross-validation helps you assess if you're doing. So today will be a fun day for me. I hope it will be a fun day for you too. Overfitting is when you fit to the noise as well as the signal. So in other words, is your model actually any good at all, or are you fitting to noise? When you look at the graph on the left, you can see a good fit. There's some noise, but you get a line that cuts across them. When you look at the graph on the right, you see overfit. We're fitting to every single point and kind of even dipping up and down when it really probably doesn't make any sense. The model that's overfit will be less good for new data than the model that's a good fit because it's fitting to the signal, not the noise. To reduce overfitting, there's a few things you can do. You can use simpler models, uh, for example, ones with fewer variables. Uh, BIC and AIC get to this, as we talked about last week. This is kind of the idea of parsimony or Occam's razor. You can also use simpler models in terms of using less complex functions, which corresponds to minimum description length, which is something I'm not talking about in the rest of the class, but it's worth taking a look at it. These are kind of the two big ways to get towards reducing overfitting. Can you eliminate overfitting? No. Every model is overfit in some fashion. I'm sorry to tell you, everything you ever do in data mining will be overfit. But you can do things that are less harmfully overfit and less overfit. The question is, how bad and what are you overfit to? To assess generalizability, you can ask, does your model transfer to new contexts? Or is it overfit to a specific context? The way I like to think about controlling overfit is in terms of assessing generalizability. Does your model transfer to new contexts? or is it overfit to a specific context, whatever that context is. So one way to look at generalizability is just to have a training set and a test set. You take your data and you split it into a training set and a test set, usually with the training set being a good bit bigger than the test set. This is good. Your models test on unseen data, but it uses your data unevenly. Some data points are training points and some data points are test points and never the two shall meet. Cross-validation is an alternative where you split data points into n, in this case six, equal size groups. So we've taken our 54 data points and we've split them into six groups of nine apiece. So in cross-validation, you're going to train on all the groups but one and test on the last group for each possible combination. So we're going to take the five blue groups, we're going to train on them, and then we're going to test on the red group. And then we're going to change which one's the red group. And we're going to train on these five blue groups and test on this red group, and so on for all possible combinations. Now the way I've been presenting it across the last set of slides makes it sound like either you use a held out test set or you do cross validation. But in fact, you can do both. An increasingly popular practice is to take, say, 80% of your data set, and within that 80%, use cross validation to tune algorithm parameters or select algorithms. Then, in the remaining 20%, use a held out test set to get less overfit final estimates of model goodness. If you have enough data for this, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. Be able to use most of your data when picking what algorithm to use, and then have a held out test set to get a good estimate of your final goodness. How many groups do you want? We talked about this briefly earlier in the class. You could do k-fold, where you pick a number k and you split into this number of groups, like the case before with six-fold. Or you could do leave out one, where every data point is its own fold, and you repeatedly train on every data point except for one, and then test on that one. Which one's better? K-fold is quicker and is preferred by some theoreticians. Leave out one is more stable, and it avoids the issue of how to select folds, which lead to stratification issues, which I'll talk about in a minute. The big thing is that when you use leave out one, you don't have to think about how you select your folds. But when you use K-fold, you really do, and different choices in how you select your folds can have big differences in terms of goodness. So there's a bunch of cross-validation variants. First one is flat cross-validation. In flat cross-validation, each point has equal chance of being placed into each fold. You'll also just see flat cross-validation called cross-validation. Stratified cross-validation, by contrast, biases fold selection so that some variable is equally represented in each fold. Typically, and kind of by default, it's the variable you're trying to predict, but it can also be some other variable that you think is some kind of important context. For example, in Mike Sale Pedro's work to predict student science inquiry skill, he stratified based on how much the student worked in the simulation and actually discovered that his models were doing very well if there was a lot of student data, if the student was doing a lot of work in the simulation, but they weren't doing so well for more minimal data. And he was able to actually then build a separate model for those cases and show that that led to better overall prediction. Another variant is student level cross-validation, where folds are selected so that no student's data is represented in two folds. 
So in other words, a student is at any time either in a training fold or in a test fold. This allows you to test model generalizability to new students, which is often something we want. By contrast, flat cross-validation or even stratified cross-validation can just test model generalizability to new data from the same students. Think about it. Do you want to build a model that will work on new data from the same kids you have data on? Or do you want to build a model that will work for entirely new kids? Usually we want to build models for entirely new kids, and for this purpose, student-level cross-validation is important to do. Oftentimes a model will look great for flat cross-validation, but will completely bomb on student-level cross-validation. And if your goal is to work for new students, you better pay attention to that. Now, student-level cross-validation is usually the minimum cross-validation needed for educational data. It's okay to explicitly choose something else and discuss and justify that choice, but it's not okay to just ignore the issue and do what's easiest. Some other levels that are sometimes used for cross-validation include content or lessons. So people might try to, you know, make sure that their detectors work on new content. What school it is. People might uh, sometimes build a model on some schools, test on other schools. <clears throat> Identity. People might build um, a model on some values of a demographic variable, like race or gender or urbanicity, and test on other ones. We'll discuss this in more detail in the class on algorithmic bias later this week. Software package. There have been a couple cases where people actually build a model on one software package, test on other ones. That's so cool. Um, and session. Um, in MOOCs, behavior in later sessions of a course differs from behavior in the earlier sessions. Whitehill et al. showed that oftentimes the first group of people who take a MOOC are different than the people who take it later. The important consideration is where do you want to be able to use your model? Do you want to be able to use your model on new students, on new schools, on new populations, or on new software content? However you want your model to generalize, be sure to cross-validate at that level. Because if you don't and you ignore this issue, you might have a model that doesn't work nearly as well as you think it does in the case you're using it. And that's a problem. So in the next lecture, I'm going to talk more about generalization and validity and kind of talk about it at a more theoretical level. I'm Ryan Baker. This is Big Day in Education, and I hope you had fun today because I did. Thank you.